In this video, I will be deleting the i7-10700, which is a non-K CPU. And on my way of deleting this chip, I'm going to guide you towards how you can do the same if you have a soldered CPU. This is going to apply exactly the same as it applies on the soldered CPUs. Just the process of removing the solder is not going to be applicable if you are deleting a CPU which is not soldered, obviously. So I'm going to delete this 10700 just because it can consume as high as 140 watts at its maximum frequency of 4.6 gigahertz. I think there can be a drop of about 8 to 10 degrees for the maximum and I can expect a minimum drop of at least 6 degrees once I delete this chip and apply liquid metal between the IHS and the die. So here I have a piece of cardboard that I put a hole in and you can see it exactly matches the back side of the PCB so that the component on the back side of the PCB don't exactly crash with the cardboard because we are going to apply some pressure on it when we are removing the little silicon that is around the PCB. Right now I am heating the IHS so that the solder between the IHS and the die gets loosened up a little and then we are going to put this CPU in the deleting tool. It becomes quite hot once you use some hair dryer, so I would suggest you to not touch the IHS and hold the CPU using the PCB. Just slowly slide the CPU in the deleting tool and then simply put the lid back on like this. In my case, I'm using this delete die mate too. You might be having some other deleting tool too. That is going to work just fine too. And you might need to repeat this process a few times because uh, these soldered CPUs are really difficult to deal with sometimes depending on how is the solder applied on your particular unit. But in my case, it took a bit of doing and I was finally able to deal with this chip. Patience is going to be the key here because you might need to repeat this process quite a few times before the IHS comes loose of the PCB. In my case, I guess it was about 10-15 times that I rotated the CPU and only then the IHS came off the PCB. It was a little annoying and it was uh, getting a little frustrating at that moment but I was finally able to get the IHS off the PCB and you can clearly see the solder is used here. Now it's time to mask the remaining part of the PCB that is not the die and uh, we are going to then use some solder removal from rocket cool that i got from rocket cool's website i mean and that is going to help us destroy the solder the solder removal is actually really easy you just need to use the right tools it is the quicksilver from rocket cool you just need to put it on the die and just use the q-tips that are there in the tool itself simply just agitate it for a while and just keep it aside for 5-7 minutes and then use a blade to remove the solder of the IHS. Removing the solder of the IHS is actually really easy. It didn't even took me 5-7 minutes. I just made sure to cut through the IHS and the solder and I was able to get it off and exactly is the case with the silicon too that is on the IHS and you can see it was quite easy and then I kept agitating the solder removal on the die itself I cleaned it using some paper towels and then I reapplied the quicksilver on the die and kept doing the exact same thing for about four or five times once you have cleaned the solder completely all you need to do is use some flitz polish on the die as well as on the IHS too. Flitz polish is going to make sure that the surface is absolutely shiny and is absolutely clean. You might need to repeat this a few times too and I would suggest you to do that because that is going to give your die a really good shiny finish. In my case I used it for about I guess 4-5 times and that made my die really good and stand out like the dies you get on the 8th gen CPUs. You don't need to do all this on the 8th gen CPUs 
or the CPUs on which the solder has never been applied. So you can see the CPU is very nice and shiny. There is absolutely nothing on the die at this moment. So it is ready for liquid metal application at this point. But before that, you need to remove all the silicon that is surrounding the die and that is on the PCB. This is a really important step because if you miss this, then there is going to be some gap between the PCB and the IHS and you don't want that. That is going to kill your deleting performance. So don't do that mistake and make sure to apply a very small uh, piece of tape on those uh, four small capacitors that are just beneath the uh, die itself and then apply liquid metal spread it using a q-tip i hope you are already aware of how this is done because if you're watching this deleting tutorial then i expect you to understand this cover the entire die and the entire ihs where it is going to get in contact with the die itself and that is it that is all you need to do and then in my case i just clamped it without uh, re-gluing the ihs back to the pcb one really important thing that I want to mention at this point is the fact that you should not stick the IHS back on the PCB using any sort of glue or any sort of silicon. If you are going to do that, then you will have to make sure to apply a very thin layer of that silicon or whatever the glue that you are going to use. Because if that layer is thick, then the distance between the IHS and the die is going to increase and that is going to destroy all your deleting performance. So this exact same procedure can be used on any 6th, 7th and 8th gen CPU. In those CPUs, you won't be having any solder. 6th gen CPUs, 7th gen and the 8th gen CPUs came with the normal thermal interface material. And finally, it's time to have a look at the average CPU temperature drop. So the first core gained a drop of 7 Celsius the second core gained a negative 6, third core gained a negative 9 and overall I gained a drop of 7.9 celsius which is what I expected when I started doing this. So this is a very decent drop. I just cannot suggest everyone to go for this just because the temperature difference is not a big one. But if you are someone who is very curious to do this, if you have all the confidence and you are very sure about what you will be doing then you can feel free to go ahead. If in case you damage anything, then please make sure you take all that risk on your own. I am not going to be responsible. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked the content. Do subscribe to the channel if you are new here and I will talk to you in the next one.